One of the great opportunities in geology and environmental studies is to be able to do a, a senior thesis project and it can range from you know two terms or one term and a bit to three terms of research and some of it may require that you do field work ahead of time and also almost always there's some lab work and data collection required that you write your thesis and it's a pretty cool thing to walk away with at the end of the day and you've got uh, a published thesis that you're that you're leaving Union College with. So there's a number of faculty at Union who have different interests and, and end up having students work on different geological problems. Some of them are local, some of them involve travel to distant land. My thesis involved looking at a particular mineral, rutile, um, and how one dates that um, in the low temperature scheme. So what that means is it allows me to determine things like how, how fast mountains were uh, uplifted or how fast erosion has been going on. So to look at very dynamic near surface processes. So we're going into the Andes to study lake cores and look within the sediments for paleoclimate records to see on a decadal scale around over 10 years for the last 5,000 years how oscillations in the Pacific Ocean such as ENSO or the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, have changed in terms of frequency and intensity through time time and what effect anthropogenic climate change might also have on those different oscillations. I got a chance to look at water and flow and I did a lot of data manipulating and trying to determine if all of these regional climate changes that, that scientists are predicting, you know, our, our earth is warming, this is going to happen, and we're looking no more snow, no more skiing, like our rivers are going to dry up and this and that. And I sort of said, whoa, wait, let's see if it's happening, and let's see if it's happening in our area. And so that's what I did. I'm going to be looking at the effects of freezing and thaw, thawing on previous arborized concrete. Uh, this is going to be important to do because the primary concern that people have right now is when water's in it, won't it expand? And then if it freezes, will it break? So we want to study to see how pervious rubberized concrete will handle if there's water in, water in it and then it freezes. For my thesis, I concentrated more on just the Matanuska Valley and examining the cooling dates of the surrounding terrain that's eroding into the basin through looking at the detrital zircon grains that are contained within sandstones. I wanted to somehow do a physics thesis with some type of environmental component. And the way I did that was initially I used the particle accelerator. And it was, I was looking to see if there was mercury in, uh, in tree bark downwind from a coal-fired power plant. So 40% of mercury pollution comes from um, coal-fired power plants in the U.S. Um, so we wanted to see how that mercury drops off or becomes uh, how, how important it is close to the source. There's students who have looked at reconstructing climate using tree rings and trying to understand how trees are reacting to changes in precipitation and weather patterns. Students have looked at glacial dynamics or glacial area and extent and how that's changed in the 20th century. Many of the students who work with me end up working on problems related to mountain building and how mountains grow with time and erode with time. So this includes not only going to mountains and collecting samples directly from the mountains, but also from the sedimentary basins that flank them where the erosional debris, the erosional detritus, comes off the mountain belt and goes into the nearby basins. One of the interesting aspects of these basins is these often include not only the record of how the mountain building progressed with time, but also they include hydrocarbons, oil, gas, and sometimes coal. So some of the thesis work that students are doing now is understanding the timing of thermal maturity within these sedimentary basins, while other students are working on the timing of mountain building and development of mountains as rocks move through or flux through those mountain belts. So we have active projects now going on in Alaska, in the Andes, in Russia, and in New Zealand. And you see students doing this work that most kids like hope to do for their masters or their PhD and we're getting to do it at the undergraduate level and that's pretty incredible. It's a huge, huge opportunity here at Union that most universities, most colleges don't have.